Hello. Hi, guys. I hope you are doing great today. And uh, so today's topic. Okay. Hey, hello, everyone. Okay, so today's tech session we have Rajiv. Uh, he has over 15 years of experience in the industry. So in this 15 years, he has worked over 40 movies so far, including Hollywood movies and Bollywood movies. So most of the prominent movies that he worked on are Resident Evil, The Three Musketeers, Happy Feet 2, Ruhi, Radhe, Saina, and Gunjan Saxena to name a few. So today he will be talking about his experience setting up the VFX pipeline and his key role is setting up VFX pipeline for all the production houses. He is, he is an expert in Houdini, Nuke, Max and Maya. Over to you, Rajiv, now. All right. Thanks, Altaf. So, yeah. Uh, hello, guys. Uh, welcome to this uh, session. And uh, since this talk is uh, well limited in the time, so I will just quickly share my screen and come to my topic. So let me share my screen. All right. So, here it is. Uh, the the game developer conference uh, but in this game i'm going to talk about uh, the vfx pipeline so unreal engine in vfx pipeline is a pretty hot topic these days uh it is there are so many advantages uh that's why uh studios are shifting toward real-time uh, technologies like on uh, gaming engines to vfx uh, I'm, I'm going to show you some of my real experiences of using Unreal Engine in VFX uh, uh, production and what, like how you can implement inside uh, your pipeline. So uh, let's start. <clears throat> so first thing is, let me start with the advantages of uh, Unreal Engine in VFX pipeline. Uh, Unreal Engine is a vast software. Uh, there are a lot of things that you can uh, do with that. There are various... Uh, projects is utilizing that i will discuss this in my next slide like what kind of projects utilizing unreal engine but especially in the vfx pipeline uh, there are uh, the advantages the first thing is real time creative updates you know when we are going uh, with a traditional pipeline with the uh, 3d software dc software like maya houdini 3ds max uh, goes through a, a big process for a creative correction so in when you are in a real-time environment you can do all those creative changes live so that's the reason uh, unreal engine is a uh, becoming more and more popular in the vfx production faster render time rendering is always a critical for vfx production so uh, with unreal engine the time for rendering uh, even 4k 8k resolution compared to the uh, traditional uh, maya and uh, typical houdini pipeline uh, it's way faster and the output is also uh, coming to the level where you can you can match the same level of quality with that and uh, large assets libraries are available in unreal engine uh, using mega scans and uh, marketplace is fully uh, now day by day increasing all the assets out there so whenever if you're planning for any production uh, maybe for pre-visualization or a final production uh, you may get your uh, assets to start with and uh, also uh, like develop uh, assets or create assets in uh, other softwares and bring it to unreal engine is also uh, fairly easy so that's that's where uh, that's how the unreal engine works for the gaming uh, but for vfx is uh, no difference in this integration with maya and houdini is actually uh, making it more seamless experience these days using uh, maya in unreal using live link and Houdini HDA engine in uh, Unreal Engine making life more easier. Uh, still, there are some challenges there, which I'm going to cover in my next slide. What is the uh, full challenges while, while we are actually using those, those options there. Uh, then, but still, there is a, this is the advantage where you will get like a, a complete integration with the, these softwares. Uh, faster shots review with directors. And here, when I'm talking about shots review, uh, this is again uh, comes to the real time creative updates because uh, directors are very picky about the, the shots, looks and all these things. Uh, sometimes they give you uh, corrections of uh, making the props, change the, uh, change the camera angles and uh, uh, add more elements. Uh, maybe they change the mood of the light, colors and all these things. But using Unreal Engine, uh, these uh, reviews will be way faster because uh, most of the time you don't need to render the images and all these uh, videos uh, all you can do is you can just share your viewport of unreal engine and uh, then you can um, you can get the 
feedback from the directors faster. Real time lighting and texturing is another advantage of using Unreal Engine. I personally worked on a few projects uh, where uh, we did the lighting and the, the shading, basically texturing and shading uh, in real time. And that was, we were uh, we were getting results way, way more faster compared to uh, the Maya render. Powerful blueprints, whenever it comes to the automation or maybe creation of assets uh, more smartly, uh, blueprints is a, a good option here. And it makes life more simpler when, when you are actually uh, making uh, some, you know, uh, if you want to make some assets for yourself or make some custom assets for yourself, uh, that time blueprints are really helpful and more powerful these days. Uh, it's not just limited to the tools which you have in Unreal Engine. Uh, we used in our pipeline uh, some of the web remote controls and views. Uh, that is also a, a rich feature which Unreal Engine provide where if you want to just uh, have a look of your viewport in, in your uh, in your mobile devices that you can easily view and uh, with out of the box with Unreal Engine, you don't need a special a special coding and uh, other thing for that. So that's an interesting thing and in going in a direction where all this uh, tool set and all these workflows can be easily integrated and, and can produce the VFX output for that. And in the end, uh, in this uh, in this list, I would say uh, hardware integrations. Uh, I just mentioned camera tracker, but there are so many things like uh, uh, capture card, uh, video capture card, uh, audio uh, card, and all these things are you can easily integrate your hardware with Unreal Engine. And that is when you are actually in the live action VFX production, it will give you a way more uh, advantage while you are using that. So this is the highlights um, and uh, before and I, there is a chat session also there. So I want to go through, uh, you know, it's a both side conversation. So if you have any questions, there is a chat here and you can ask me and I will come here and uh, I will see all this, uh, uh, your your uh, questions here and I will I will try to give you uh, best possible answers if I, if I go through those. Okay, so let's uh, start with the next one. Okay, so uh, Unreal Engine VFX product projects overview. And uh, while, while I'm using word VFX, and if you are from gaming industry or some other industry, word might confuse you, but I'm sure that you hear this word before. VFX stand for visual effects. And when in, in feature film or gaming, uh, not uh, uh, in feature film advertisements and CG production, it's the VFX term is where you are adding all the visual effects in the scenes. And... Uh, here, so let me talk about the types of projects that we have. So first thing is uh, 3D animation films. If you want to make a film, uh, Unreal Engine is uh, can help you in, in some portion. It's a, I would say that it is not a complete package where you can create models and do everything from start to scratch. Uh, but it is actually helpful in the pipeline to actually speed up the work and give you the quality of work uh, which is similar to the the other other 3D application softwares. Okay. Second area where live action films and live action films these days are more and more rely on Unreal Engine. The reason for that is uh, because virtual production is growing and where virtual production is growing, uh, there we need to add the LED panels in the back or maybe if you are shooting with the green screen, uh, that time you need to show some real time environment in the back. Uh, so that is I will cover in my in my next when I'm talking about the project category. But in live action, Unreal Engine is uh, highly utilized and you can also use if you are uh, you working on a live action film. Definitely it will be good for you. Advertisement is I would say it's uh, way, way sooner uh, adopted by advertisements uh, projects uh, because the project timeline is short and they need to create the assets and uh, they are they are you know the overall shots are very the frames are very close enough with the products and mostly the products are full cg so uh, car advertisements and product or advertisements uh, they already adopted unreal engine and growing uh, in 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 coming future they are they are going through more and more deep uh, visualization for their products uh, so that that's where the, the the three projects which I found. I'm sure that it is going to be utilized in way more industry. Uh, but I'm just uh, keeping my slide and my presentation 
uh, where the VFX involved, okay, uh, because there are industries like architectures or maybe some other industries who are utilizing uh, Unreal Engine, but that is uh, not heavily depend on the VFX part. Okay, so uh, now comes to the category. So these are the types of projects. Project category is like where full CG and where full CG means like there is no live action. It's like a ICH kind of movie. So those movies uh, we can produce. There are uh, like studios like Veta. They, they produce uh, a sample uh, completely from Unreal Engine like uh, Meerkat demo that you already see. And if you haven't seen, go and check that and you can see the level of quality what you can crack through Unreal Engine. So that's a that's a good example uh, set by uh, the Veta Digital. And uh, virtual production is the area where another big, uh, you know, uh, milestone or or a, another big, uh, big thing uh, presented by ILM uh, through Mandalorian. Uh, they used a huge LED wall setup with the Unreal Engine. And uh, now I, I will let you know like why Unreal Engine is required because uh, there are, there are LED panels and those LED panels if you project something. If you're if you're displaying something on those led panels uh if your camera move that should be a parallax effect in the in the back of the screen uh that should not be achieved by if you just uh, render or just presenting a video in the back so that thing that you, you um, that is very helpful in in there like when you're using unreal engine real-time output on led panels having your camera tracking system on place of your real camera fetching the real-time output and and uh, getting uh, like combining all these technologies together to get the output uh initially it's it's a bit complicated and uh, the hardware and all is a bit expensive to set up but in the long run if you set it up properly and utilize smartly in your projects definitely it's a it's a good uh, things to implement in the vfx projects and vfx pipeline these days ar and vr no doubt this is the one of the another area which is like uh, unreal engine uh, is uh, highly uh, utilizing these days and uh, this is uh, you know one of the where where you can put the devices like HTC Vive and uh, you can do all the plotting of your scenes in the VFX uh, which is which is kind of very uh, advantage for your DOPs and directors to actually visualize that 3D scene uh, that's the idea uh, project deliveries so when it comes to the project deliveries if you are in an Unreal Engine VFX uh, pipeline the deliveries might be uh, you need to deliver the render passes that will be the end and maybe if you are just working on the virtual production then your project delivery will be a real-time end display output and end display is something which when you are projecting your unreal engine output to the led panel that's what i'm saying virtual assets is uh when you are talking about ar and vr where you no need to render the passes and no and display stuff where you need to give the virtual assets and where it will be uh, visualized by the headsets or hardware which is available for that so this is the project overview let me go through the uh things i mean in in my previous slide see there are different types of projects the categories are different the deliveries are different but uh, we'll, we'll cover the first one which is the 3d animation frames full cg and render passes so these three will be covered in our this slide it's very simple i don't want to make it complicated just to give you a quick start in this i know when we are creating the pipeline design and in the detail one it can be a way more complicated uh, chart than this but uh, this is a simple idea is the blue one starting is the 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 way you start and the middle one is the unreal engine part and last one is the compositing part so let me start with the 3d assets 3d assets you can bring from either from marketplace or either you you build it in maya uh, 3ds max or blender okay so you create 3d assets first or character animation you do in maya uh, because that character animation part is sometimes maybe it's come from the motion capture or maybe you are doing the traditional keyframe animation in both cases the animation should be come from outside and these two area where unreal is not ready this time and this is what where we see things like when we are trying to implement the 3d vfx workflow there is no way right now to actually start modeling stuff in the unreal part you have some shapes and all but that is just for testing and r and uh, so get the real assets from from the uh, outside and you can get it through fbx there are a few other 
uh, import uh, file methods, which is uh, Alembic and uh, USD. But FBX is the one which in VFX pipeline, we personally used uh, widely and it solves our problem, whether we want to import assets from Houdini or Maya, whether it is the animation or whatever. FBX is the preferred one, which we use. Uh, then it comes to the once you get the assets, then start with the materials and the lighting. So the look development is a good choice to actually use in Unreal Engine way more faster and uh, save a lot of time in this uh, camera animation. See character animation good for when you are doing in uh, in Maya or, or other DCC application. But camera animation, if you do inside Unreal, you'll get way more flexibility. So if your scene is ready, if your you know uh, your entire layout is ready, you are set it up all the foliages, terrains, and all this stuff. And there, if you make the camera move, so that means your layout part, if you do within the Unreal Engine. Uh, that is actually way more uh, way more beneficial and DOPs will see way more, uh, you know, a better visualization in Unreal Engine. Camera animation is also used in uh, Unreal Engine because uh, most of the time camera animation is coming from the real camera. So, for example, if you have a real area or uh, red effect camera or whatever camera, black magic camera you are using, so that camera, you put the camera tracking system on top of that and that tracking camera tracking system will send the real time data to the Unreal camera and you can store uh, or you can you can record the takes inside Unreal. So that that pipeline is very straightforward. Uh, some of the camera tracking system that name I can tell that uh, Moses, NCAM, Stripe, Follower, uh, there are they many available in the market right now. Uh, even if you don't have uh, that much complicated setup, you can still track your camera using uh, STC Vibe Pro, which is uh, kind of a easy uh, available option and uh, it's not that much expensive than that. Still, it is expensive. It's not like, a, you know, in a couple of uh, thousand uh, Indian rupees, you can't get that. So that's the idea. Okay, so uh, now comes to the FX part. So FX is uh, in Unreal. Uh, we tried FX like small FX like a smoke. Uh, a bit of explosions but it is in the far or not in the real uh, in the in the front facing camera part and uh, a bit of uh, environmental effects is very good in this uh, like environmental fog and all this stuff unreal engine is good but when it comes to the volumetric water destruction chaos is there but still it's not production ready well fully uh, there are a lot of uh, back and forth happening if you if you try to use this in production uh, but still, if you if you have a project that you want to do the destruction, uh, it's better to do it in in Houdini or any other software which have a better rigid body system. Then bring those destructions uh, meshes inside Unreal and do the render, and the quality will be way more uh, better. So if you want to destruct a building, <clears throat> go ahead and uh, do the destruction fractures or all this thing in Houdini. Export that as a uh, FBX and import into uh, Unreal Engine and do it your real time render from Unreal Engine. That is uh, that is way more better. Maybe uh, <clears throat> I will I will try to cover a few all uh, you know tutorials and all this stuff learning materials for you guys. You can you can check out my YouTube channel which is uh, YouTube.com/vfxpipeline. I I will I will update things there also. Okay, so uh, comes to the render process. Unreal Engine is the very these days to actually get all the passes where you can uh, separate all the objects in a layer uh, you can get the mask easily you can get the depth pass you can get the uh, light pass and all these things so getting passes from unreal engine from exr is uh, is also a good option so you can directly export those exr and take it into the compositing level and you are good to go so this is from start to end I mean, I cover most of the area where Unreal is required. Still, this is the this is the mix of a gaming and a VFX workflow. Okay, uh, let's uh, let me quickly check the questions and then I will come back again. <clears throat> okay, so I get one questions here. <clears throat> Would you propose using USD format over FBX for asset management? Has your team explored that option? <clears throat> okay, so uh, 
in uh, we personally use uh, explore the usd but we didn't use this in production uh, we were trying to get this in production but uh, uh, we don't find this fully supported few of the elements which were working in the projects uh, it was uh, since uh, it was the elements imported from uh, from Maya and Houdini to Unreal Engine. So what we found so far <clears throat> in production while we are working in production, FBX is the final solution for us. Uh, whether it is a character animation importing from others, whether it is the assets which we are bringing, uh, or whether it is uh, any other other thing. So so far, FBX is way more powerful. Uh, you know, whenever when we select FBX, there are tons of different options which we we need to we need to check or we need to put the settings or we need to select things properly based on the what kind of thing that you are importing in Unreal Engine or exporting from Unreal Engine. So FBX is the solution, but in production we haven't used that. But yes, in in coming days uh, we are more and more exploring the USD pipeline in our in the studio and uh, we'll 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 show the case studies once we reach to the to the level where we can show something very uh, tangible okay come to the point where uh, let's say now you decided okay yeah it looks cool i mean a lot of advantages and it looks simple let's implement that so now let's let's see the real scenarios like how this is going to be happen so first thing is if you want to use Unreal in VFX production pipeline, and I'm talking about the real studio scenario. So you want to uh, implement the production pipeline. First thing is you need internet for artists. So that is why I'm mentioning this thing is because mostly in VFX environment, in the studio or wherever you are doing the creative work, there there is no internet. So basically, the, because it's not about uh, restriction, it's about the security reason because in production network, internet is very limited or restricted but it is required so when if you are planning for a production pipeline you need to access the quicksell mega scan marketplace references uh, for that you must have internet so that is the that should be a separate division or maybe a internet system uh, or maybe you should set up a, a proxy or make some settings in your firewall to allow some of the urls which is utilized by by artists so the which is related to quicksell mega scan uh, marketplace so that is one you need to you need to figure it out with, if you want to implement that now comes to the studio workflow so when it comes to the studio workflow uh, and the points which i mentioned is that is based on the our our, our rnds that we did is what we find is the folder structure uh, that should be carefully uh, defined because uh, unreal is unreal files is not just one file uh, for example if you have maya file you have dot ma you have houdini file you have dot hip file and all the things is contained inside there there are dependencies like textures and all alambics and all but the software itself create a proper structure and hierarchy for that but majority of your content is contained inside your file but in in uh, unreal part uh, it's a bit different. So you need to understand carefully what is the folder structure of Unreal. Uh, because the, when you are planning a project or planning a sequence, so creation of Unreal project should be uh, carefully decided initially while you are pro planning the project. Uh, because uh, whenever you create a new project, it's create a lot of dependent files. So make sure try to avoid using the same elements in multiple projects because whenever you create uh, same projects multiple time it will recompile it will create drive data caches it will create all the temp materials and all this stuff it will recompile the shaders it will rebuild the lighting just for the same thing so if you are using if let's say if you are using if you are working in a city scene and if you know that all the buildings are going to be at the same place let plan according to like plan your project name uh, should be like city sequence and within that sequence if you can have multiple maps and locations so there you can have map one map two but the thing is organize or uh, organization of that folder will be way more easy compared to if you're creating a separate project for that but, uh, because uh, even here like unreal projects uh, uh, like main file is your u asset file but that USF file 
you should you should understand like what is the what is us set and what is map file and uh what if you want to if you want to save your uh imported stuff for example if you're bringing your fpx files alembics and uh, textures what should be the hierarchy so folder structure is a very crucial part when you are designing the vfx production pipeline with the unreal engine otherwise what will happen let me tell you otherwise your tbs of drive will be dead with no sense okay so this thing carefully plan second thing is version control system so it's not something like when you are in maya so maya v001 v002 and so and so forth here if you want to save a version because it's there are multiple files which are changing at the same time okay so maybe the map file is editing us set file is editing the main file is editing the settings are updating project settings are updating they're all contained in a file in your location so let's say you are keep creating a version of your scene and you are showing uh, presenting that but if your director said okay go back to the seventh uh, first version which we see then that is fine so if you don't plan your version of your projects and you i mean it's a saving of your versions then you might be stuck to that what setting i use in that so that is something which is should should be carefully planned and the vcs is currently if you want to try start with that git is something which you can start and git is a version control system which can track your directory it's basically or any version control system you can use which track the folder structure not file okay so that is what you need you need to uh, you need to think about that uh, custom project templates so when vfx pipeline in in the vfx workflow uh, making the custom pro, uh, templates will help you to the artist to start with the new thing so whenever new templates are they say okay you should use this uh, this folder structure make sure your file should be here your texture should be come here and maybe if you want some initial uh, sky and uh, some of the elements that you want like whenever you start you create templates like a game template or vfx template and virtual production template like same you should have your inside studio templates and that will increase the that will increase the you know productivity of the artist and save a lot of time so that is also we should be included in that uh, now it comes to the data export and import so when i say that okay you know i need to export data from maya and import in in unreal so make sure that all are following the same protocols and structures make sure the naming convention is proper make sure when you are importing that time it's it should proper so that process and workflow also comes with vfx pipeline i mean so far uh, with uh, maya is very good uh, maya and uh, houdini is very good python apis and they support creating tools for them so in maya uh, this side you can create tools but unreal is still it's not um, it's not there is a python but it's not uh, up to that what maya and houdini offer so that is the something but still this import export part you need to manage carefully otherwise you will waste your time most of the thing and uh, and uh, there might be some issues while you are working and otherwise artists will come and say that hey yesterday it was importing why it's not importing now so to reduce that make sure it should be a proper pipeline and workflow for that texturing workflow when i'm saying is unreal engine is good you can create uh, materials and you can try with some bit of like a little bit of painting there but when it comes to the proper texturing workflow make sure you should have a proper software like uh, painter or maybe photoshop or or um, it can be open source like game pen krita whatever but whatever uh, texturing workflow that you should decide because unreal engine itself will not give you that level of quality which you can achieve from these software so that is uh, you, you need to think uh i have i guess i have only few minutes left uh, 15 minutes left so i need to speed up this uh <clears throat> level map workflow uh okay inside unreal engine uh we need to set some workflow which is level maps workflow is something let's say if uh, as i mentioned that if you are planning for a city scene or a forest scene or maybe a, something like a ocean sequence you need to plan like okay this is where my top angle and this is where my front angle this is where i can i can see something uh, from the from the road angle so maps you can change the assets will be same okay so this is what you need to understand 
uh, the sequencer shots lineup. So, see, Unreal Engine is very good in terms of when you want to visualize all your 3D assets in a sequencer. It will it will create timeline for you. It will create a uh, you know like in After Effects, you create timeline. You you bring all the shots. Uh, so similarly, you can create the lineups here also. So whenever you want to see things in a flow, like whether the shots are matching, the lightings are matching, it's good to visualize there. So this part should be, you know, go through, uh, go through this process. Particle effects, Unreal particle system, I would say, uh, when if you are comparing with Houdini, it's no way. It's like, it's not exist in front of Houdini because Houdini particle system is one of the best. Uh, it, it's up to me. But unreal engine particle system is actually evaluating and growing better and getting better and better previously it was cascades particle system and now it's nigra there are a lot of logics that you can write if you want to create some you know cool small effects that you can easily achieve uh, what you can't achieve is where interparticle collisions comes you need to create some filling water splashes uh, splashes when I'm talking about is like real splashes, not just uh, like uh, the flowing one, the form kind of splashes, not that. Okay. And uh, when it comes to the volumetric and uh, the creating fires and smoke, you can do that. But these are the sprites one. So it's basically a texture just floating with the particles and instancing all those uh, sprites on top of those. But in terms of logic wise, it's, it's very good. And the way, the direction which Unreal Engine is going, I'm sure that this particle system will be very powerful and can achieve things, which is you can you can do this in in Maya. And okay, so blueprints is another thing that you need to carefully define uh, while you are working on projects. So wherever you feel that okay, there are three four different things that you can combine, and then you can multiply that in your scene. So that part can be easily, uh, you know, set by blueprints. And what we see blueprints in, in a way that it will help us to create digital assets more smartly. And if you want to, if you want, if there is an asset where we want to, for example, if there is a, uh, there is a, there is a car, which is having like uh, some fire in the back. So this is like, they are, and we need to create like 10, 10 cars running on a road, which is having fire. Uh, so instead of adding fire in everything, like we create a blueprint and the assets for that, where we include all the all the particle system with those assets and and create that, and other artists can reutilize that in other sequences. So it's very good to start with this. Uh, create your own assets blueprints uh, with that. OCIO color pipeline. While you, when you are working in VFX, uh, this thing you should consider from the day one when you are starting the project because. It is very critical when things goes to the color stage of your scene. And uh, Unreal Engine now uh, is fully supported OCIO workflow and uh, and you can go through that. Still frame review in when you are when you are planning the Unreal Engine workflow, make sure you are planning for still frame reviews because there is a screenshots option, better screenshots option where you can take the high resolution uh screenshots from directly from unreal engine and uh, but still it's very expensive because it's it's taking actually it's calculating all the stuff in real time uh so you can go up to 8k and maybe 12k it's uh, and it's also depends on the what kind of graphic card that you have so uh, real time review uh if you can plan those things is also very important uh and why, why i'm talking about real time review because traditionally we used to have RV player and uh, and maybe some other DJV player where you add all those MOVs and director will see. But when you are talking about the Unreal Engine workflow, it's better to actually plan the Unreal Engine install in the review system, uh, the computer, and uh, show it in real time with those things. Or maybe you can share your screen and take the real time input from, from directors. That will help you. Uh, Multi-user workflow. Uh, it is it is very helpful when you are actually layouting and designing the set. Uh, way more uh, way more uh, you know useful. Well, uh, while there are three four guys working on the same scene, some are working in the left side, some are working in the right side. They can see their changes and very powerful. Render passes should be planned uh, according to the project uh, based on the project requirement. What composers need. Uh, 
uh, it can be rendered later also but if it is planned properly then in the same exr you can select all the passes and you can just directly render from the software so that is where the the pipeline come let me before i'm going to the next slide let me come to the questions and i will see that whether i have other okay so now i get more questions uh what would you advise as a network protocol udp tcp and real camera tracking system okay so see most of the camera tracking system they are working on udp protocol okay they are not following the tcv protocol but if you have uh, for example i use the uh, moses camera tracking system and that works on udp uh but it's all depends on like what what exactly you want to achieve and it's also go through the specification of the vendors because sometimes they recommend they have both option but they say okay first priority should be go to udp then only you can uh, you can get the better results any other game engine that we can use apart from unreal engine uh, okay so you know game engines uh, it's not like when we when we are talking about gaming engine that we just see okay unreal engine but there are one more big engine which is unity okay but it's not the life is not end here they are like tritech and tons of different and most of the studios gaming studios they actually build their own game so available one is like the answer of your question is if you if you don't want to use unreal then unity is the another good option which is easily available uh what would you advise and uh, okay i guess this is covered and um, would you propose usd format i okay i guess the latest one in top uh okay uh, right so i guess I, I i covered that let me go back to my screen again okay so we see the good pictures and everything is fine and all you know grass is green here but there is some points where there is a challenge which which we we face and these are the real challenges first thing is let me start with there is no offline installer uh, maybe this is uh, there is no problem for most of the guys who are having high speed internet at their home or maybe in the open environment no issue just install epic installer and just download whatever gaming engine you want but when you are in a production environment when you are in a studio the installation of unreal engine is a is a hectic i mean all you have to do what thing which we do which we used to do is okay just copy the unreal folder and paste it there but it's not just just work like that because there are dependencies you need visual c++ libraries and tons of different libraries that needs to be installed to run that that exe so there is another option where which is recommended on the forums which is you should recompile unreal engine if you want to create a offline installer i was uh, maybe we'll we'll try that in future and we'll create that but uh, out of the box there's no offline installer and this is a challenge uh, i want to say it is a problem i can't done but yeah it's a, it's a challenge large installation file even if it is a online installer the installation size is you know I have three Unreal Engine installed in my my system, two six, two seven, and five, and the size installation size is one hundred and fourteen GB, and one hundred and fourteen GB size for one uh, software. I mean, let me talk about just one software, which is around thirty GB file. I mean, thirty GB, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge, okay, because you have other software, and if you are limited with the SSD size, because if and again if you are having a personal system you might have two terabytes of ssd nvme drive and you can play around with that right okay even for me there is no problem right now i have two tb nvme it, what a big deal 114g when you are in production when you have 300 users working in the studio that time even one gb extra size is actually you are you are limiting your thing because that the same space you can utilize for caching and all this stuff right so large installation file is a challenge uh, i don't know maybe it's a dependency or what uh, so need internet to download updates and assets so that is also a challenge and uh, so here need powerful computer to handle unreal scene so unreal is not for everyone i mean if you, you can 
you need a powerful machine you need a gpu based system you need a more ram and then only you can work in production otherwise you can just play around with them just install unreal engine and just uh, rotate the viewport and add some spare cubes and put some lights and make yourself happy but if you want to do a real production you need a powerful machine you need at least 64 gb of ram minimum you need a rtx graphic card or maybe some better uh i mean minimum rtx will be better if you want real-time ray tracing and all this stuff and uh you you need an nvme ssd you need you need a ssd to load the project cache because each project size when you when you start project that time it will be like okay even an empty project you create, it will be like two, 2 GB size. The empty project, nothing complicated there. You just start a new scene, 2 GB size. As you keep working on this, you, you won't even realize your project size become 200 GB. Okay. So, if this is one, one project. But when you are 300 users again, and if you are working in a big scale, and that time it is a big problem. Because, and also those files, you can't just put on the spin drive, which is like 7 to 200 RPM, the SSD normal SATA drive you need if you have ssd you can load it faster otherwise it will take time and you can you will keep time okay rebuilding the scene data shader compilation will take time it's a challenge i mean this is the process which it's working i'm not saying this is right or wrong i'm saying what is the challenge it's like sometimes first time when you're loading or maybe you accidentally delete that or maybe somebody else is opening in the file in their system they keep you know uh, wait for a few few minutes up to hours to actually do all the shader compilation and all a complete new ui learning curve for the artist you know industry in a vfx industry all the artists are used to with the workflow which they uh, which is, is like you know maya blender max and all but this ui is is a bit different so it's adopting this ui uh, ui learning curve is a bit challenging uh, for the vfx community lack of python api and PySight 2 support for design and develop uh, the custom pipeline too uh, this is uh, this is you know one of the thing that i don't know maybe unreal engine should re uh, add faster because this will allow developers and the pipeline community to add more and more existing tool within unreal engine and that will that will be way more uh, beneficial for that okay <clears throat> so i guess uh, I reached to a point where uh, I uh, I guess it's 8.15. Let me go to the questions and uh, and then we'll close. <laughs> okay, so Sajil Shukla. Hi, Sajil. Okay. Thanks, Rajiv, for this. Uh, I have a couple of questions. I think there is one more question by someone. It is, do you use Git to manage your VFX pipeline? If not, why did you choose another solution? Did, do, do you use Git to manage your VFX pipeline? If not, then uh, why did you choose another solution? <laughs> okay. We use, we use Git for smaller, smaller projects. I mean, not the big projects. For big projects, we used a file-based solution, uh, which is a, a, a proprietary solution that we brought. Uh, but Git is a, in production. While we are working on that, it was not. I mean, even with LFS, like large file support, it's not up to that. I, I, I know there are options integrated in Unreal Engine with Git that you can use that. But while we are going in production, me and my team decided to actually not to go with that. So we use the custom solution, uh, which is uh, the tracking of the folder, entire folder. So at the time, mm -hmm. we just take the snap of the folder, put it in a database somewhere with a name. And if you want to revert, the same will be revert. So it's a, it's a custom versioning system. Because okay. uh, we just want reliability. We don't want to take risks, that's why. So yeah, but definitely Git is a good system. We use for development, we are using Git and GitLab uh, very fr frequently in our in our pipeline. So yeah, I, I, I like Git. I want to use this in production, but it's time uh, just because not having enough confidence. Yeah. 
okay i think uh, we are done guys uh, guys please post your feedback on the tag i have shared the link already uh, thank you so much rajiv for your time this is a very valuable session yeah. thank you so much guys and the next session will be by vishnu murthy on making animated movies using unreal engine it is about to start up right after this see you guys there thank you Thank you.